Ladies and gentlemen, it's hate week, and we're here to discuss the history of the whole thing to start off the week on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. And, of course, a shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting those podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. It's hate week, ladies and gentlemen. And in case you're new here, in case you're newly enrolled to the university, or maybe you just want to brush yourself up on the history, that's what we're here to talk about today. The history of the Territorial Cup, specifically football. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the importance of it, why it means so much. We're going to talk about the series history, all sorts of good stuff. And the whole week of Lockdown Sun Devils is going to be dedicated to hate week. So make sure that you are tuned in because we're going to have a lot of fun. And because for whatever reason, U of A fans like to tune in during this week. Hey there, Wildcat fans. What's going on? Thanks for, thanks for, uh, Tuning in. Always appreciate you guys coming on for whatever reason you choose to. Let's go ahead and hop right into Hate Week. We're going to start it off with the history of the Territorial Cup. And this goes all the way back to 1899. 1899, the first ever Territorial Cup series happened. And it was a four team series. It had um, Arizona State. Although at the time that was a normal school of Arizona, wasn't even a state university at the time. It also had U of A, obviously, Phoenix Union High School and Phoenix Indian School. So you had those four programs that went up against each other. And in the first ever series, normal school of Arizona emerge victorious over U of A 11 to two final, you know, just like everybody drew it up. That's score Gami more than likely. That's a very obscene final score, but that's what it was 11 to two final. And from there, a hatred between these two schools was born and U of A began to dominate the series. They would win 20 of the first 22 games. Since then, the series has been knotted 50 wins for U of A, 45 wins for Arizona State, and a single tie. So in all of that time, U of A has been ahead of Arizona State, right? Since Arizona State became a state university, ASU has taken over that rivalry because they have the winning record since then. ASU is 33 wins, 30 losses, or 30? Yeah, 30 losses, one tie. They have been on a tear recently. They had won five consecutive games, stretching from 2017 to 2021. In that time frame, included the very famous for ASU, 70 to 7 win during the COVID year. It's it was one of the most lopsided victories in the history of of this this territorial series. And there's been some really good teams over the course of the history of it. There's been some good U of A teams. You had Desert Swarm back in the 1990s. You had ASU put together some really good teams with Frank Cush. They also had good programs in the 90s that included a Rose Bowl team under Jake Plummer and everybody else. 
there's been a lot of history that's gone back and forth here. But I find it really interesting that the series has been dominated by U of A, partially because of how much they won that series in the very beginning. For Arizona State, they've really started to own the series. In fact, since the turn of the century, uh, U of A has just seven, eight wins. Just eight wins since the turn of the century. ASU's dominated the rivalry. U of A has not repeated as back-to-back champs of the Territorial Cup Series in football since 2008-2009. Otherwise, they have won just four games since they repeated back-to-back. ASU had a two-game stretch in 2012 and 2013. And then, like I mentioned, they had that five-game stretch from 17 to 21. ASU has really dominated this rivalry. And it's been a rivalry that has been one of the most underrated and underappreciated in all of college football. It's the oldest Cup Series rivalry. It's, It's just phenomenal for so many different reasons. But the hatred is so, so real between these two teams. And we'll talk about the hatred here in just a minute. But it goes back a long ways. And there's been lots of ups and downs for both teams. Arizona State has had some really good winning streaks uh, here and there. They they won consecutive games from 1965 to 1973. And from 1965 to 1978, they only lost one Territorial Cup game. So both teams have had some very, very good stretches throughout the history of this program. Or the, the rivalry, I should say. It's very politically driven as well. There's a lot of um, off-the-field stuff that is really factored into the hatred between these two programs. And you've gotten to enjoy plenty of very important players that have come and gone through both programs and have been the antithesis of the, the overall hatred of the rivalry, the guys who drive it so much, your Brandon McGee's, your Demario Richards of the world that are staples of this hatred and this rivalry. There's been so many different things that have gone through this program, coaching-wise, player-wise, fan-wise, there's nothing but animosity between these two teams, these two programs, these two universities. There's no love loss, and I am no exception. I was born to hate U of A. I was raised that way, and guess what? I do. I, I do not have very many nice things to say about that university whatsoever, and we'll talk about why that hatred is in just one moment. I do want to talk to you about our new friends over at listening.com. College students, listen up. There's an incredible app. It's called listening.com, which can take any academic paper, PDF, or class material and turn it into an audiobook. It can read math equations, technical words, and complicated documents. It knows all the citations, footnotes, and references so they can skip them and it jumps right into the chapter or section that you want to. It even has a one-click taking bu- note-taking button where it automatically puts the last 10 seconds into a notepad so you don't have to type up your notes while you listen. Best of all, if you use the link listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks of free. Go ahead and give it a try. Usually, it's only two weeks for free. But you can get that extra week when you go to listening.com slash locked on. That's listening.com slash locked on. L I S T E N I N G dot com. L O C K E D O N. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we are posting new content. I would also be remiss if I did not mention to you guys the brand new. National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering top sports stories from across the day with local experts and locked on our experts on locked on, excuse me, with our national shows. They cover every league, football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Let's go ahead and hop right back into our conversation now and take a look at why 
ASU hates U of A so much. And as I alluded to, this is a very politically driven hatred as well. And I know that some of you may not understand where the politics come into play. Let's go ahead and dial it back to like the 1940s, 1930s. ASU back then was normal school of Arizona from 1899 to 1901. They moved to Tempe Normal School from 1901 to 1925. They went to Tempe State Teachers College from 1925 to 1928. And then they went to Arizona State Teachers College from 1928 to 1945. And finally, Arizona State College, 1945 to 1958. So in the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s as well. These... These schools were going back and forth in wanting to have the state university label. You'll notice in all of those at no point that it say state university. And that's because U of A did everything they could to try and block these, these opportunities for, we'll call, we'll call them Arizona State College for the time being, to become a state university. U of A wanted to be the only state university in the state of Arizona. It drove a lot of people, naturally, to be very, very upset about this. A lot of people who went to Arizona State College were pushing for the opportunity to be a state university. There was a lot of teachers. There was a lot of Outside involvement as well. The Arizona State uh, Board of Regents was involved with this. And eventually, they were able to finally become a state university in 1959. This is when Arizona State University was officially recognized as a state university, much to the dismay of U of A. From there, there was all sorts of different factors that went into this. One of the biggest ones was ASU had lost the territorial cup, like the literal cup, and eventually it was found in like a local church or something like that. But, you know, U of A was naturally very upset that they were not able to have the cup displayed. And eventually they did come to terms with an agreement of having it be a traveling cup that would go between the universities and yeah, it, it, it just, it went back and forth. Whoever won the territorial cup and the football game would own the, own the territorial cup. It was a really cool idea. And once that really started gaining momentum, it was a lot, a lot of fun. And you've had a lot of stretches. Like I mentioned, some, Frank Cush teams that really dominated the series. You had Larry Smith and Dick Tomey, who also were very, very good at U of A. Uh, I know that there was quite a few really good seasons under Todd Graham for the team. Uh, What's his name? Herm Edwards technically did not lose a Territorial Cup game. Uh, He was fired, obviously, towards the beginning of the 2022 season, but he took over in 2019 and went 3-0 in the Territorial Cup. It's it's been a very important rivalry, and so much of that stems from the politically driven landscape of ASU wanting to become a state university and U of A doing everything that they could to block it. So you have generations of Sun Devil alumni who were taught this. My grandfather was part of the graduating class. Oh man, back in back in the mid to late fifties, or might even been the early sixties. He went to school for the teaching option and he was denied the school being a state university. So he was legitimately a part of all of those politics, which he grew to hate, which passed down to my father. My father, when I was born, brought me up to be an ASU fan. I had all sorts of merchandise. I went to games. I was a big fan of Sparky, even before the redesign when he looked kind of freaky. But I was also 
brought up in a very pro ASU house. And I can tell you that as the host of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, I am quite the fan of the Sun Devils. And this rivalry is very, very important to me for a variety of different reasons. And we'll talk about all sorts of the different reasons that have gone into why this rivalry is so important for so many different people in just one moment. Before we get to that point, though, I want to talk to you again about our friends over at FanDuel. You can score during the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $150, or excuse me, can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide variety of betting options including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Again, thanks as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And of course, you guys should subscribe as well to the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. We're here 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day across any league with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever Sports 24-7 streaming channel. We're going to close out this edition of Locked On Sun Levels with why this rivalry matters so much. And it really starts with what I went into detail previously. There is so much animosity that has been built up between these universities that has been built up from the alumni that has been built up from the players towards these two schools. This territorial cup, this duel in the desert is so important for the people who have come before me and the people who come after me. We have seen every year these two teams play harder than they've ever played throughout the throughout the entire year. Both of these teams could come in a perfect 11 and 0. Both teams could come in 0 and 11 or one team could be 11 and 0 and one team's 0 and 11. It doesn't matter. You toss those records out the window. These two teams have nothing but hate for each other and with hate comes the ability to overcome any talent deficiencies, any standout injuries, any lack of coaching. At that point, it's become inherited by these players to just have that hatred towards them. They could be best buddies in high school with some of the guys that went to U of A and some of the guys that went to ASU. In that game, they hate each other. And this is something that's been passed down, not just from the alumni that did not play the sport, but also the players. Brandon McGee, I think, is one of the best examples and the epitome of what it means to be a Sun Devils football player and what it means to hate the University of Arizona. There is nothing that he sees from that university that is worth his time and energy to love, to even respect. It's just not there. It really isn't. And I don't think it should be there. Because it's years and years and years of so much drama that's been built up. To me, there's not a respect factor. Sorry. I'm. It is what it is. You can respect U of A if you want. That's fine. The most respect that I can deliver is trying to be unbiased. When I talk about that school and I mean try because as I have said on this podcast and as I will continue to say for as long as I am here, I am never, ever, ever taking ASU to lose a game against U of A football, basketball, baseball, whatever. I will always take ASU to win on these podcasts. You have my word. I, I, I just can't do it. U of A could be the number one team in the nation. Arizona State could be winless. I'm taking us to pull that upset. I'm taking us in that trap game. I just am because when it comes to those football games, records don't matter. Talent doesn't matter. 
It's who's going to play with the more with the most amount of edge. Who's going to go into that game with the mindset of we're better than you and we're going to beat you up in this game. I have heard people call ASU players thugs just because of the rivalry of this game. And it's not, it's not something that I like. Not that there's ASU people that don't call U of A players thugs. I don't like that either. I like the hatred of it, but you got to keep it at a respectable level. I may have inherited the hatred from a political standpoint, but I also am not going to sit here and wish injury upon guys or call them thugs or anything like that besides Jaden and Laura, but that's neither here nor there. Bottom line, why is it so important? Why does it matter so much? Because it's years and years and generations of hatred that have been built up to these teams. You have former ASU and former U of A football players who go to these games. You have kids. You have legacy kids. We have that now, the Rashadas. Jaden and Roman, their father Harlan played U of A way back in the 90s. There are generations and legacy players at both universities that are taught and bred to hate each other. So it's an important game. doesn't matter if both teams are winless. doesn't matter if both teams are contending for a national championship. This is always an important game. Quite frankly, this game, sometimes it truly is the measuring stick for whether or not you had a successful season or not. ASU, or excuse me, U of A is one of the top 20 teams in the nation per the college football ranking. Not my ranking, per the college football ranking. They are 8-3. and three. They actually, believe it or not, have a chance to go to the Pac-12 championship game. What they would need is Oregon to lose and them to win. And they're in. And I'll tell you right now, that's all I need if I'm Arizona State to go into this game and want to win. I already have a lot. But knowing that I could derail a potential Pac-12 championship appearance for them, man, that's even better. That's what I want. I want to take your hope that you have for having some outside chance for a New Year's Six Bowl. And I want to stomp on it. And I want to crush it. And I want you to watch while I do it. I want to beat you by 10 possessions. I want to shut you out. I want to force 50 turnovers. I want to score 100 touchdowns. I want to storm the field. Not really. Don't. Don't storm the field if we beat U of A. I'm begging you. This is not a game to storm the field for. This is such an important game for ASU to win. And it's the first year of Kenny Dillingham's tenure here. And I can't think of a better way to start your tenure at Arizona State than to beat that university and that team down south. That's what I got for you guys. The history of the Territorial Cup when it comes to football. The reason it's so important. Anything and everything else in between. If you guys have been in, you know, tuned into the Sun Devil, Locked on Sun Devils podcast for a while. If you're alumni, if you're players or your player parents, because I know that there's some of you guys out there that tune in. Let me know in the comments what you think about this rivalry. What does it mean to you guys? Let me know. You can hit me up on Twitter. You can find me at Richie Brad 36 and the podcast as well at L O underscore sun Devils. I appreciate you guys for tuning in as always make sure that you tuned in for this whole week. As we go through hate week together, we navigate ASU versus U of a for the entirety of the week. I will see you guys tomorrow to continue all things hate week till then you keep it locked right here on locked on sun Devils.